Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about ECMP. Now it's gonna be short and sweet because I don't want you to think that this is a major component of the NSC4 exam. It's one of those things you just need to be able to recognize the name, know what it is, and then take a look at output and identify what's in the output. So before I go any further, my name is Chris Ray. I'm with InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your cybersecurity career. And if you found this video because you're studying for the NSC4 exam, then I highly suggest that you subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be making many more videos like this. So getting right into it, when we're talking about ECMP, I'm talking about equal cost multipath routing. In this case, uh, the screen says equal cost multipath load balancing algorithms for IPv4 and v6. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time here, but just know that these are the uh, algorithm settings. So you can do source-based, you can do a weight-based, a usage-based, and then a source and destination IP-based algorithm. Uh, for source, or sorry, for ECMP, source IP based is your default. If you don't do any configuration and you just put it in uh, and you start using ECMP, that's what it's gonna use by default. Source and destination IP address can be select using the command line. And then weight based and usage based requires a little bit of additional configuration to use it. Weight based, you have to uh, assign weights to the route or the interface and then usage based, you have to define a threshold uh, a threshold measuring the quantity of data moving over that, that route. So going over here, and like I said, this is gonna be real quick. Uh, you don't need to know how to configure it. You don't need to know um, you know, all the use cases. You don't need to fully understand ECMP. It's a very minor part of the exam. But as you can see here, let's say we've got this PC. Doesn't matter what its IP address is. It just wants to communicate with this destination down here, which is 10, 10, 10, 100. In between, we have these two subnets, 10, 2, 2, 0, and 10, 3, 3, 0. By default, because it's using source-based source, source -based IP address, ECMP, when this tries to communicate, this FortiGate here will look at it, and it will choose a route based on the source IP address. So all the data set from this source IP address, whatever it is up here, will use the same route. In this case, let's say it's using 10.2.2.0. It will go this way. It'll hit 10.10.10.100, 10, 10, and as it comes back, it will use the same route coming back. Now... I had a really nice um, lab set up for this, but I accidentally blew it up. Um, I, uh, I wanted to get it on 6.4, it was on 6.2. I wanted to show you the really pretty routing monitor in the, in, in the GUI, uh, but like I said, I blew it up. So all we have is this beautiful screenshot here, uh, but you can see, if you remember, using get router info routing table all, that shows you only the active routes in your FortiGate. Uh, and you can see down here we have a static route with this destination 10 10 10 0 using either 10 2 2 1 is the next top gateway or 10 3 3 1 is the next top gateway on the right side you have your priorities and on your left side here you have your metric because these are the same the metric matches the priority matches it's the same destination we have an equal cost multi-pathing scenario so this is what you will see or what you could see on the exam if you're presented something asking you about ECMP, is it active, is it being used, how do you know? This is how you know. All right, everybody, um, I'm not gonna spend any more time on this. It's a very minor part of the exam. If you even see it at all, I just wanted to bring it up and try and round out the series of videos that I'm making here. Again, my name is Chris Ray, I'm with InfoSec for Humans, where I help you level up your cybersecurity career. 